Good day, guys. It is possible to run DarkOS on your clone R36S using the files from ArcOS for clones. Here, I've got it running on my K36 variant clone. I will say this was possible to do day one of DarkOS's release, and although I spent around 30 minutes trying to get it working using the ArcOS for clones files on my K36 clone, I just wasn't able to get anything actually working. It turns out the missing step was just renaming the uBoot file. I do apologize to the few dozen people that I had told there was no clone support. I was wrong. Having said that, let's go over how you can hopefully get this working on your clone. Before we get started, it's worth noting your device does need to normally work with ArcOS for clones. So if you've never been able to get ArcOS for clones working on yours, then unfortunately DarkOS won't work either. We're over on our Windows 11 PC now, and to get started we've just opened up Google Chrome, and gone to the Reddit thread where the rough steps to get DarkOS working on your clone were posted. I will link this down in the description below. It basically just mentions what files you need to copy over to your DarkOS installation and rename. So to get this working on ours, we obviously need to download DarkOS. We've just gone over to the DarkOS GitHub releases page, which again, I will link directly down in the description below. So it was updated yesterday, which is pretty cool. The new update brings a bunch of fixes as well as a new Atari Jaguar emulator. We won't cover the new update changes today. I do wanna do a dedicated video on that. Instead today, we'll just focus on getting it working on our clone. So we wanna scroll down to assets. We wanna download both parts of the RG351MP build. So this one here, you want part one and part two. You must get both parts. You can simply left click on both of them to download. We'll also need the boot files from ArcOS for clones. So there's a few different ways to get those files. If you've already got ArcOS for clones installed on an SD card, you can just take the files from there. Otherwise, you can just go to the ArcOS for clones GitHub page, click on releases, which again, I will link directly down in the description below. Scroll down and download the latest version. That does seem like a bit of a waste downloading a massive image file, extracting it, and then ripping the boot partition from it. So to save you the hassle, I have already downloaded, ripped, and re-uploaded the boot partition by itself. I did post a link on the Reddit thread we saw earlier, but I'll also put a direct link to this boot backup down in the description below. Just want to click on it. It is just a Google Drive link. And at the top left, just click download. It's not very big, coming in at around 18 meg. We'll also obviously need something to write dark OS to our SD card. For that, I always like to use Rufus. Just go to rufus.ie, scroll down a little bit, and download the portable version. At the time of filming, 4.11p. If you don't already have it installed, you'll also need to download and install 7-zip. You can get it from 7-zip.org. On here, just download the correct version for your PC, most likely the top 64-bit one. And then once it's finished downloading, to install it, just double click on it and follow the on-screen prompts. There's no shady adware involved. So once everything's finished downloading, we can close off Chrome and open up our downloads folder. You should have both parts of the new Dark OS, as well as Rufus, and a way to get your Dark OS for clones boot files. We'll start off by extracting Dark OS. We're just going to right click on part one, go down to show more options if you're on Windows 11, 7 zip, and extract two. Although we're only right clicking and extracting part one, because it is a split archive, it does automatically look for and extract part two. So you will need both parts. So once that's finished extracting, You'll also want to get your ArcOS for Clones boot files ready. So as mentioned, if you've already got it installed to an SD card, you can just put your SD card into your PC and copy them from there. If instead you wanted to rip them from the ArcOS for Clones image, just right click on it. Assuming you've already extracted it like we have, this is the raw image, not the compressed zip. Go to 7-zip and go to Open Archive. We want to double click on 0.fat, which is the boot partition. And here's all the boot files here. You can simply select them all and drag them out to your PC somewhere. Instead, we're just going to use the boot backup we downloaded from Google Drive. Here it is here, just right click on it. If you're on Windows 11, go down to show more options, 7-zip, and extract to. We won't touch the boot files for now. Instead, we'll insert the SD card we'll be installing Dark OS to. I'm just using a cheap 16 gig one I had laying around for this test. 16 gig is the minimum size, by the way, at least for the current build. So with your SD card inserted, open up Rufus. Under device, make sure your SD card selected. For me, it's the only one, 16 gig. Keep in mind you will lose everything on the SD card, so make sure it's either empty or you don't care if you lose anything on it. Leave boot selection as disk or ISO image. To the right of that, click select. Navigate to where we extracted our dark OS image and double click on the dark OS image itself. We wanna leave everything else as default. Triple check we have the correct device selected as once again, you will lose everything on it. And when you're ready, click start. You'll get a warning saying you're gonna lose everything on the SD card, click okay. And if you have multiple partitions on your SD card like I do, you'll get another pop-up saying you're gonna lose all of them. Click OK. So once it's finished writing, we can close off Rufus. And now we have to get our boot files ready. So navigate to your ArcOS for Clones boot files. If you've used the Google Drive link like we are, just open up that folder we extracted earlier. From here, we'll just run the DTB selector. If you can't run this EXE because you're not on Windows or you just don't want to run the EXE, all of the files can be found in the consoles folder. You will just have to find your device. 
The EXE just makes it easier and copies everything over for you. So to start off, just press enter, select your specific clone. Since we have a K36 clone, it's the Kinhank, so four, and there's only one panel type, one. I'll also just press one for English, although it does say it's the default, that wasn't the case the first time I tried this. You should now have a few new files in this folder. For me, it's the top five here. We want to copy three of these files over to the boot partition on our new DarkOS install. We want to copy ArcOS for Clones U-Boot, this one here. We also want to copy Image, just holding down Control and clicking on it to select both of them. And finally, we want our device-specific DTB. For me, it's rk3326-k36-linux.dtb. We want to copy those three files, just Control c go over to our new DarkOS boot partition, and we want to paste all three in here. You should get a pop-up asking if you want to replace the image file that's already in the folder. Make sure you click yes. Once they're finished copying, we want to right-click on rk3326-rg351mp-linux.dtb, click rename, press Ctrl A, Ctrl C, press Ctrl V as well just to get to the end of the line, and we'll type in .bak, and just press enter to select yes. Next, we want to right-click on our device's specific DTB file. So for me, it's rk3326-k36-linux.dtb. Click on rename, press Ctrl A and Ctrl V. All we've done is rename our device-specific DTB to the stock DTB's name. That just saves us editing the boot.ini file. Finally, we want to right-click on rkos for clone uboot.dtb. Click on rename. We want to call it rg351v-uboot. Make sure it still ends in .dtb. Once you've done that, press enter. And that's pretty much it. We'll safely eject our SD card and put it back into our R36S clone. It is worth mentioning you should not try and copy your ROMs over just yet, since it hasn't finished the initial boot setup and EasyROMs has not expanded. We're back with our R36S clone. Just going to insert the DarkOS SD card we just created into the right hand side slot, slot one. Make sure slot two, the left slot is empty. You don't want any SD card in there for the initial boot. And we'll just power it on. We do get the ArcOS splash screen, so that's a great sign it is working. It does take around five minutes to finish the initial boot setup, so just be patient. If instead, when you powered it on, you were getting a red blinking light, then you've most likely done something wrong with the U-boot or the DTB steps. Just make sure they are named correctly and you did copy the correct files. After a few minutes, you should hopefully be on the new DarkOS home screen. You press start, it should say DarkOS at the very bottom, and it does. So that's DarkOS installed. Before we get too excited, we should make sure everything works. So our left joystick is correct. We'll try our right joystick. That is inverted. Unfortunately, that is a pretty common issue with ArcOS for clones on some devices. Not really the end of the world for most systems. It only really becomes a problem for ports. We'll go into one of the submenus and we'll see if our sound works. We should have a clicking sound when we move and we do. So the internal speaker works. And I'll also just quickly connect a pair of cheap headphones just to make sure the headphone socket works. Sure enough, it does work. All that's left to do is power off the device, put the SD card back into our PC and copy some games over. We're back on our Windows 11 PC now and we've just inserted the DarkOS SD card. And unfortunately you can see the EasyROMs partition hasn't appeared. Super easy fix, right click on the start menu, go to disk management. In the bottom window, we wanna find our SD card. It's this one here for me, disk one. We wanna find EasyROMs, here it is here at the very end. Right click on it, click change, drive letter and paths. Click add, click okay and we can close off disk management. And there's our EasyROMs partition. You can see it has fully expanded to fill the rest of our 16 gig SD card. We'll open it up, take a quick look. So these folders here are where you would put your games. We'll scroll down a little bit. I'm just curious to see if they've added the DOS folder and NDS folder by default in this new updated DarkOS. So unfortunately there's still no DOS folder by default, but if you've watched my previous DarkOS video, you'll know you can just create your own DOS folder and put your games in there. We'll create one now. Right click, new folder. Let's call it capital DOS. We'll see if NDS is there. So NDS is there by default now, so that's good. I think we'll copy some harder to run games over and we'll come back. So we've finished copying a few games over. I think we'll start with NDS. This was broken on the initial build without doing an over the air update, but I believe it should be working out of the box on the latest build. And it does. You no longer need Wi-Fi to get NDS working. And sure enough, it looks like NDS works pretty much perfectly. At least Mario Kart DS. L2 and R2 do toggle the screens around like you would expect. I believe L3 should bring up the drastic menu, and it does. Let's go down to exit. Next up, we'll try PS1 using these stock settings. Again, this was another system that was broken using stock, but you could get it working on the initial build by changing the core. Here, we're just leaving everything as stock, and we'll see if it loads. So we've got a black screen. It is taking a while. Oh, there we go. Interestingly, it took around 10 seconds to load this time. We'll go into an actual level just to make sure it does run okay. 
And yeah, seems to be playing pretty much perfectly. We'll toggle fast forward on to see if that works. And it does. And we might enable the FPS counter. So bring up the RetroArch menu. Go back to the main menu, settings, user interface, on-screen notifications, notification visibility, and display frame rate. And yeah, we are running at a solid 60. We'll do fast forward. Fast forward seems to be about two and a half times faster. So that's good. I'd say PS1's a huge win. Next up, we'll quickly try DOS. Again, there was no DOS folder by default. I just created it and put Crystal Caves 1 in there. We do get the MIDI error, that's fine. It will go away by itself in a few seconds. And once we're in the game, again, it seems to run perfectly. We'll go into an actual level just to make sure. And yep, does work. Next up, we'll try some N64 with GoldenEye64. We'll see if it runs about the same as on our non-clone. Didn't take too long to load. We'll bring up the RetroArch menu. Once again, we'll turn on the FPS counter. So settings, user interface, on screen, notification, and display. So this screen lags, that's fine. It does pick up. We'll go into an actual level though. So the initial cutscene's laggy, but that's fine. That's to be expected. So we're idling around 50 so far. Oh, it has dropped down to 40, 45. It does seem to be running a little bit slower than on non-clones. We'll go into the tunnel and that should get us close to 55, I believe. And it is sitting 55, so I guess performance is pretty similar to non-clones. There are a few very slight lag spikes just right there. It started, started again. We never saw that on our non-clone, but it is running way better than stock OS. Next up, PSP. We've just got an easier to run one, Mega Man powered up, just to make sure PSP does work. It did load almost instantly, which is great. So again, this game should play pretty much perfectly with the occasional lag spike. And yeah, it seems to run pretty much the same as it does on every other OS. At least PSP does work. I believe Function should bring up the PPSSPP menu, and it does. And we'll just go down to Exit. You could also obviously press Start and select twice. Finally, I did just copy one port over, Vanilla RA. And since Portmaster isn't installed out the box, I just copied my ArcOS Portmaster install over as well. So it loads, that's good. We'll do the joystick test, so the left joystick works. The right joystick is still inverted, but it is mapped correctly otherwise. We'll go into an actual level. Yeah, I would say this works pretty much perfectly. Apart from the inverted joystick. But again, that isn't an issue with DarkOS, that is an issue with the ArcOS for Clones DTV. I think it's worth seeing if our USB wireless adapter and USB tethering work on our clone. Just using my cheap $2 one, plug it in. Press start, go down to options, go all the way down to Wi-Fi, connect a new Wi-Fi connection, hopefully it's detected. It hasn't detected anything yet, we'll give it a second. Still hasn't shown up, we'll give it another second. So nothing's showing up. This wireless adapter did work on our non-clone running Dark OS. I think we'll try resetting the handheld itself with the wireless adapter connected. Unfortunately, we are just on a black screen. It looks like it has failed to boot again. So we'll just press the reset button. That's a bit better now. We now have the ArcOS logo. For some reason, this cheap SD card does occasionally fail to boot DarkOS. I've never had this happen with my Samsung Evo Micro SD though. So it has failed to boot once more. It started loading Emulation Station and then just went to a black screen. I might unplug my wireless adapter just in case it's that interfering with it. We'll hard power it off, just hold down the power button. So we've got the boot logo once more. It says, welcome to DarkOS. There we go, it did boot that time. It did just take three attempts. So we'll plug in our wireless adapter once more. Press start, go down to options, go all the way down to Wi-Fi. And unfortunately we're back to a black screen. I'm wondering if my wireless adapter is interfering with it somehow. Can't quit out, it has completely locked up. I might remove my wireless adapter once more. We'll leave the wireless adapter for today. And instead we'll try USB tethering. So we'll connect our Android phone to the OTG port. I'm just using a USB-A to USB-C cable and then a USB-C to USB-A adapter. I've noticed it does not seem to work if I use a USB-C to USB-C cable. We'll enable USB tethering, give it a second, press start, go down to options, and go down to network info. So we do have a valid IP, so USB tethering does work. We might try screen scraper. We'll leave it all as default and just go scrape now. So it does seem to be going way too fast. It's definitely not downloading anything. We'll double check. We'll restart emulation station. So nothing DS. No, so I didn't scrape anything from Scraper. We'll go back into it. We might change the source to the games DB, see if that works. It's taking a bit longer this time, that's a good sign. It does say downloading image. It looks like it might be working. So we should have N64 and NDS scrape now. So we'll cancel this, just press scrape now once more to cancel it. We will have to refresh emulation stations. So we've got our N64 box art and our NDS box art. 
So USB tethering does definitely work, but it seems like there was an issue with screen scraper itself. The game's DB was working though. I think we'll unplug our phone and I do just want to try our wireless adapter once more. So we'll press start, go down to options, go down to network info just to make sure we don't have an IP. And we don't, we just have our loopback, that's good. Go all the way down to Wi-Fi once more. Connect to new Wi-Fi. It did find our access point, so I'll enter my password. And it says it has connected. We'll quit out. Go back up to network info to make sure we have a valid IP. And we do. So my USB wireless adapter does work again. I'm not too sure why it failed to boot those first few times with it. Or why it didn't work the first time we tried. Again, it could just be an issue with this SD card. Since it did fail to boot a few times on my non-clone when using the same card. Overall, it's really impressive that Dark OS does actually run on clones. Having said that, it might not be perfect on all clones just yet, since this isn't an officially supported build. Hopefully one day we do get an official Dark OS for clones though. As far as performance goes, the lower end systems were pretty much the same as Arc OS for clones, but N64 definitely ran faster. If you do try this on your clone, please let us know down in the comments below how it actually runs and if there's any issues with it. It would be good to get an unofficial compatibility list for clones running Dark OS using the Arc OS for clones boot files. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.